Hello, my estrogen challenged viewers. It's your menopause tailor again, bringing you another important topic in the realm of menopause. This is video tutorial 74. I like to tell you the number of the video and the sequence because it really is critical to watch them in order. I mean, the whole purpose of this series is to teach you everything you need to know to manage your menopause your way, and the only way to do that is to build your education one block at a time. So if you're in the habit of jumping around and watching these out of order, I can assure you that you're going to confuse yourself. Please believe me on this. I spend hours masterminding the order of these so that you won't be confused. So take advantage of my organization. It'll serve you very well. Today, we're addressing a topic that you may or may not have heard of before. And depending on what you've heard about it in the past, you may have all sorts of misconceptions about it. Another reason I'm so fastidious about the order of these videos is that there are so many misconceptions about menopause that most women have almost all the facts about menopause completely upside down. In fact, one of my upcoming videos will be on the upside down misconceptions about menopause. But today, we're going to discuss just one of them. Have you ever heard the term estrogen dominance? That's our topic for today. If you've never heard it before, what comes to mind when you hear that term? Does estrogen dominance sound like a positive thing or a negative thing to you? Does it sound like something you want to achieve or something you want to avoid? And if you've already heard something about estrogen dominance, what have you heard about it? Is it good or is it bad? Now you know me, I don't like to label things good or bad. Everything depends on context. And for me, the context is you. You are the context. So let's discuss this thing called estrogen dominance and see how it applies to you. So let's start with the basics. Your menstrual cycle. When you're still having periods, there's a monthly dance between estrogen and progesterone. Do you remember this slide this is something you saw way back in tutorial nine when I first started teaching you about the female hormones. So you'll recognize this one. This is that dance between estrogen and progesterone. And I have recreated it for you with Play-Doh. <laughs> you know how much I like making props for you, right? I think it makes your learning a lot easier. So this graph shows you one 28-day cycle, okay? So there's day one, day 14, day 28. So this is the 28-day cycle. And the pink line here is estrogen. The multicolored line is progesterone. And the blue line is testosterone. We'll focus on estrogen and progesterone today. Now, let's examine this cycle more closely and let's address just one segment at a time. So, here we have just the first half of your cycle, okay? So we've got days 1 through 14. As you can see, estrogen is the dominant hormone in the first half of this cycle. You see the pink line? In the first half of the cycle, the pink estrogen level is higher than any other hormone. That would make it dominant. Now, let's look at the second half of the cycle. Notice that progesterone is the dominant hormone in the second half of the cycle. You see the multicolored line? That's progesterone. And it's higher than any other hormone. That would make it dominant. Now, if I then cover all except the last two days of the cycle, you'll see that the estrogen is dominant again. It's the one that's pink, and it is higher than all the other hormones. 
So all told, there are 20 out of 28 days when your estrogen level is higher than your progesterone level during each menstrual cycle. But more important than anything else is the fact that these two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, are fluctuating throughout the cycle. They're up and down, up and down. And you can also see that sometimes the fluctuations are kind of gradual, like here. And other times the fluctuations are sudden. When you see huge peaks and huge troughs, they're sudden. And you can see that sometimes one hormone is much higher than the others, as here and here. And other times, they're almost at the same level. So you're seeing all these little details about this cycle. So the truth is that you have episodes of both estrogen dominance and progesterone dominance during the course of each 28-day menstrual cycle. So then, where did the term estrogen dominance come from? And is there a contrary entity called progesterone dominance? And then the next question is, if menopause is due to estrogen loss, why are we talking about estrogen dominance? You see, I don't think it's logical to just accept a term without an explanation for it. In order to answer these questions, let's compare what happens during your menstrual cycle with what happens when you start perimenopause. Do you remember tutorial number 10 when I taught you the phases of menopause? Perimenopause is when you start transitioning into postmenopause. And it can take up to 10 years to actually reach postmenopause. So if we make a graph of the hormone fluctuations that occur from premenopause to postmenopause, here's what it looks like. Here you see age at the bottom. I specifically specified ages 40, 50, and 52. Okay, those are the most important ages for our discussion. Once again, the pink line is estrogen, the multicolored line is progesterone, and the blue line is testosterone. And for purposes of our discussion today, we're going to focus primarily on estrogen and progesterone. So let's dissect this graph just like we did the other one for your menstrual cycle. So, let's see, if we cover everything past the age of 40, what do we have? Okay, here you have the pink multicolored and blue, pink, the pink, pink and the multicolored and the blue lines here represent the average of what you saw in that menstrual cycle. So yes, they're just flat lines here, but you know that they're really cycling because that's when you're having menstrual cycles. So on average, before you ever start perimenopause, your estrogen level is the highest, followed by your progesterone level. And your testosterone level is the lowest. This is the average of what's going on in your body before you ever begin perimenopause. So, but then you hit perimenopause. And look, now you have a different picture. The estrogen level now is much higher than the progesterone level. Look at this. And this period of time where estrogen is much higher than progesterone can last from age 40 to age 50. Look at this. There's a 10-year possible time frame for this. It doesn't always last 10 years, but it can. That is the entire phase of perimenopause. Well, what happens after that? Let's see here. After that, you have all of the hormones dropping to a very low level. And look, 
they stay at a very low level forever and ever. Amen. From then on, they're practically non-existent. So if we compare these two graphs, I want you to pay attention to a few things. The menstrual cycle during premenopause has periods of estrogen dominance lasting less than 14 days at a time. But the phase of perimenopause has periods of estrogen dominance lasting up to 10 years at a time. The menstrual cycle during premenopause has periods of estrogen dominance that alternate with periods of progesterone dominance. But perimenopause has only estrogen dominance and no progesterone dominance. The menstrual cycle during premenopause involves a dance between estrogen and progesterone. But during perimenopause, there's no dance between estrogen and progesterone. You just have low progesterone and high estrogen. It's a constant state of higher estrogen and lower progesterone. And that is what we call estrogen dominates dominance, a persistent state of higher estrogen and lower progesterone. That is what you have here in the time frame of perimenopause as you transition from premenopause to postmenopause. Now, way back in tutorial 10, I explained to you that the first Thing that happens when you enter perimenopause is that your progesterone drops. Well, when your progesterone drops, it creates a state of estrogen dominance. But here's the catch. It's temporary. It lasts only until you reach postmenopause. And for most women, that's between two years and 10 years. So estrogen dominance is a temporary state that exists only while you're perimenopausal. So now you're probably wondering, well then what's all the misconception about? And if you reflect back on tutorial number 18, I told you that the alternative and complementary community focuses primarily on progesterone, or maybe only on progesterone. And the traditional medical community focuses on estrogen. In other words, the alternative and complementary community focuses more on the loss of progesterone during perimenopause, right here. And the traditional medical community focuses more on the loss of estrogen during postmenopause, right here. So it would make perfect sense to replace progesterone during perimenopause when your progesterone is low. And it would make perfect sense to replace estrogen during postmenopause when your estrogen is low. But you know what? Misconceptions don't make sense now do they? That's why they're called misconceptions. They're illogical. You know that I'm always focused on making sure things are logical, right? So let's examine some of the illogical things about this thing called estrogen dominance. Okay, so misconception number one. If you look up estrogen dominance, you'll find claims declaring just about every gynecologic problem known to man as being caused by estrogen dominance. Here's a list of the diseases I found that are supposedly due to estrogen dominance. And I say supposedly because it's an erroneous assertion. Fibrocystic breasts, PMS, fibroids, breast cancer, endometriosis, infertility, uterine polyps, polycystic ovaries, autoimmune disorders, diabetes, swelling, menstrual cramps, irregular periods, breast pain, fatigue, irritability, 
decreased sex drive, headaches, weight gain, thyroid dysfunction, hair loss, memory loss, insomnia. This is not accurate. Whenever you see things that attribute all problems to one thing, and oh, by the way, they offer the one solution, don't believe it. Every gynecologic problem is not due to estrogen dominance. You just saw that during your menstrual cycles you have periods of both estrogen dominance and periods of progesterone dominance. You saw that these periods of estrogen dominance are more or less as long as the periods of progesterone dominance. So for the entirety of your reproductive life, these two hormones essentially balance one another. And if that's the case, how in the world can estrogen dominance cause all those gynecologic problems? Okay, so misconception number two. Although I just showed you that the period of estrogen dominance during perimenopause only lasts two to 10 years, you'll find all sorts of claims stating that it lasts forever and that it's the cause of postmenopause as well as premenopause. Now, you know that's not true. As you can see, this state of estrogen dominance during perimenopause doesn't last. It's transitory. It's followed by a state of estrogen depletion, estrogen deficiency. So in essence, these claims that estrogen dominance is permanent erases the distinction between perimenopause and postmenopause. You see, that's not fair to you. The truth is really simple. Most women have estrogen dominance during perimenopause, right here, okay? And as most women don't have estrogen dominance after perimenopause. Hardly any women have estrogen dominance during postmenopause because their estrogen disappears, right? Remember, postmenopause is a result of estrogen loss. Your ovaries go out of business and they stop producing estrogen. So how can anyone say that's estrogen dominance? Do you see the lack of logic? Remember, everything I teach you will make sense. If something doesn't make sense, start asking questions. Okay, misconception number three is that estrogen dominance is dangerous. You just saw that you spent at least half of your entire reproductive life in a state of estrogen dominance. Half of every monthly cycle was an estrogen dominant state. That was Mother Nature's plan. So there's nothing abnormal or dangerous about having more estrogen than progesterone. Remember, estrogen is your female hormone, just like testosterone is the male hormone. So whose hormone is progesterone? It's the baby's hormone. The progesterone in your body isn't really for you. It's for the baby. Pro, progesterone, pro means in support of, gest means pregnancy, own means hormone. It's the hormone in support of pregnancy. Okay, so everyone in the family has a hormone. Yours is estrogen. And since your body has to support a pregnancy, it also produces progesterone. And get this, you even have higher levels of estrogen than progesterone throughout an entire pregnancy. So they separate out the hormones. Estrogen's for women, testosterone is for men, Progesterone is for babies. <laughs> it's really logical, isn't it? Okay, misconception number four. Now this one stems from the fact that the alternative and complementary community focuses on and uses progesterone for everything. So what's happened is that this phenomenon 
of a temporary perimenopausal period of estrogen dominance has led to marketing of hundreds of brands of progesterone products promising quick fixes for every gynecologic problem, including post-menopause. So these marketers take the complex interplay of estrogen and progesterone and reduce it to one simplistic tenet, that estrogen causes all your problems and you need to balance it with progesterone. And in the process of getting you to buy progesterone for perimenopause, they also scare you away from estrogen. That way you'll continue proge using progesterone long after it's capable of alleviating your symptoms of perimenopause. And this estrogen dominance misconception will have you believing that estrogen is dangerous during postmenopause when it's actually the very thing your body needs. And that's why you'll see progesterone marketed as the answer to both your peri and postmenopausal woes. The fact is that it's only beneficial during perimenopause for alleviating the symptoms of perimenopause. So the overall effect of this term estrogen dominance has given you the impression that there's one problem with only one solution for just about every gynecologic problem from your 20s to your 90s. I really wish it were that simple, but it isn't. So to summarize, there is, there is such a thing as periods of estrogen dominance in your life, but there are also periods of progesterone dominance. Both of these can produce various symptoms, and those symptoms will vary from woman to woman. Estrogen dominance is not the cause of all or even most gynecologic problems. Estrogen dominance is very common during perimenopause, but it ends at postmenopause when estrogen deficiency causes the symptoms of menopause. So progesterone replacement may alleviate your symptoms during perimenopause, but it's probably not going to help you at all during postmenopause, and it may make your symptoms even worse. Okay, I hope that clears up the misconceptions surrounding the issue of estrogen dominance. Just remember, everything should make sense. And always be wary of anyone who is trying to sell you something. Most of what any marketer will say will probably be skewed in favor of getting you to use their product, no matter what your problem is. Okay, so that wraps up our topic for today. On another note, I want to invite you to submit questions to me to answer aloud in a video tutorial. You know, of course, I'll always answer any questions you post in the comments on my videos, but this is a, for a video tutorial that's a Q&A. I'll collect questions periodically and do a Q&A Q presentation, and I'll organize them so that they create a logical sequence of information in that video. You know, as you know, I always answer all your questions in the written comments associated with each vi video regularly. So. Formulate questions and know that you never know when they'll be a part of a Q&A on a video tutorial. Okay? Okay, that does it for today, ladies. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and be sure that you go to my website, menopausetaylor.me, to see all the goodies there. I'll see you next week. Bye! <music>